Hello, I'm Kimilia, and this is Kini News. Zahid has clarified that he wanted to say long live Palestine and not Israel in his speech at a rally yesterday. He apologized and said the mistake was made in the heat of the moment. Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has apologized to supporters of the Palestinian struggle over a slip of the tongue at a rally when he accidentally chanted support for Israel. In a post on Facebook, he said it occurred as he was delivering a fiery speech at a Free Palestine rally held in Bukit Jalil, Kuala Lumpur yesterday. Bebas, bebas! Bebas, Palestine! Hanchur, hanchur! Hanchur, Israel! Bachul, bachul! Bachul, Israel! Bangun, bangun! Rakyat Malaysia! Hidup Israel! Hancur Israel! Hidup Palestine! Hidup Palestine! Hancur Israel! Hancur Israel! Takbir! 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 In his post, Zaid said in the heat of the moment and in high spirits, he made a mistake in his speech and hereby apologizes for that. He said with a sincere heart and burning spirit, yet continued to chant Free Palestine and Long Live Palestine after the mistake. During the rally, Muhammad Sabu also delivered a speech. He called on Anwar to form a new order to help countries that have been fighting against Israel. Amana President Muhammad Sabu has called on Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim to use his global influence and organize a new world order against Israel. In a speech at a pro-Palestinian rally in Kuala Lumpur yesterday, he said the world cannot possibly hope for Western superpowers like the US and the UK to deal with atrocities committed by the Israeli regime. He said the world could not depend on them as they were the ones responsible for establishing Israel and top US leaders were under heavy influence of pro-Israel lobbyists. Wahai Perdana Menteri yang ku kasihi, namamu begitu harum di seluruh dunia. Kamu berupaya Membuat satu tata cara baru di dunia ini. Rapatlah dengan negara-negara Islam yang ikhtiraf Israel. Tapi ajak mereka putus hubungan dengan Israel. He added that Anwar should help countries that have been fighting against Israel and those who do not recognize the regime so they can grow stronger. Muhammad said Anwar should not fret about leading the fight against Israel as the struggle has now gotten worldwide support, including from Europeans. Meanwhile, Fahmi Fazil has told those that keep bringing up the BlackRock issue to walk the talk and stop using WhatsApp, Facebook and Instagram, which is owned by Meta. Communications Minister Fahmi Fazil said any party that continues to raise issues about BlackRock should also cease using all services related to the world's largest international asset management company. Fami labelled those persistently discussing BlackRock as hypocritical and accused them of manipulating perceptions. He said, if they claim they want nothing to do with BlackRock, then they should stop using WhatsApp, Facebook and Instagram. Taking Facebook as an example, he said PAS spends considerable amounts on ads there, thereby funding Meta, and they know Meta stands on Israel. He added that those discussing the BlackRock issue should be honest and do what is right. He said, if they are not brave, then they shouldn't walk the talk. Last Thursday, past Secretary General Takiuddin Hassan had criticized the government under Prime Minister Arno Ibrahim, saying they were dishonorable for continuing the proposed collaboration between Malaysia Airport Holdings, Kazana National and BlackRock. The man suspected of kidnapping Albertine Leo has been remanded again for six days. Previously, he was remanded for 13 days until yesterday before being released on police bail. The man suspected of kidnapping six-year-old Albertine Leo Jiahui has been remanded again today to assist in investigations into a case of possessing child sexual abuse material and pornography. The 31-year-old man has been remanded for six days starting today until next Saturday. This came following an application made at the Kulai Magistrates Court. The remand is to allow further investigation under Section 10 of the Sexual Offences Against Children's Act 2017 and Section 292 of the Penal Code. 
Previously, the suspect was remanded for 13 days from July 23rd until yesterday to assist in investigations under Section 365 of the Penal Code and Section 14 bracket A of the Sexual Offences Against Children's Act 2017 before being released on police bail. Johor Police Chief M. Kumar was reported to have said that the suspect was re-arrested yesterday following the discovery of various sex toys, adult pornographic material and child sexual abuse material at his residence in Kulai. Muhammad Jailani Kamis has claimed that AMNO is trying to bankrupt him. Jailani, who had joined PAS, said receiving a letter of demand from AMNO was the price he had to pay because he believed in the struggle. Rumbia Assembly person Muhammad Jailani Kamis has accused AMNO of trying to bankrupt him. This is for demanding a hundred million ringgit from him for defecting to PAS. In a trauma in Nanguri, Klantan last night, he said he joined PAS and was threatened with a 100 million ringgit lawsuit. The representative from the Melaka Legislative Assembly said receiving a letter of demand from AMNO was the price he had to pay because he believes in the struggle. On August 3rd, BN Chairperson Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said the coalition served Jailani with an LOD following his move to join PAS. Zaid said the legal letter was a preliminary step for the party to claim 100 million ringgit in compensation from him. Jailani first won the Rumbia seat on a PKR ticket during the 14th general election in 2018 and two years later defected to BN along with three others from Pakistan Harapan to form the new state government. On July 16th, past Secretary General Takiuddin Hassan announced that Jailani joined the party in June last year. Still on the topic in his response to Jailani, Amno Puat Zarkashi said that the Rambia Assembly person had bankrupted himself. He pointed out that Jailani had signed a statutory declaration before being nominated in the Malacca state election in 2021. Amno Supreme Council member Muhammad Puat Zarkashi has slammed Rambia Assembly person Muhammad Jailani Kamis. This came after Jailani accused Amno of trying to bankrupt him by demanding 100 million ringgit from him for defecting to pass. Poet labelled Jalani as an individual with no class and said that he had brought the bankruptcy upon himself. Elaborating, Poet said that Jailani signed a statutory declaration before being nominated in the Malacca state election in 2021, but later chose to hop parties. He said this is why Jailani had to bear the consequences. He added that Jailani never had enough to eat and that's why frogs like to jump for survival. Jailani's status as a Malacca assembly person is still unresolved after he joined PAS about three weeks ago. The announcement of Jailani's membership was made by PAS Secretary General Takiuddin Hassan. Back to Fahmi, the communications minister told reporters that the government may develop a social media platform for Malaysians. The government is considering the proposal to develop a social media application specifically for Malaysians. This is according to communications minister Fahmi Fadzil. At a pro-Palestine rally last night, he said this was because some social media application providers are profiting off Malaysians but failed to ensure user safety. He pointed out that it was estimated that Facebook alone earned 600 million US dollars from Malaysia last year and questioned what they have done to ensure that the condition and use of their platform in Malaysia is safe. Fami said he had also met with celebrity host Aznil Nawawi who came up with the proposal following Meta's recent action of removing social media postings related to Palestine. He added that during the meeting, he shared his views regarding social media usage that should be communicated to Aznil's followers. Fami said that his ministry will also ensure that Meta does not remove any content related to yesterday's rally. According to him, Meta had agreed to do so, and he had provided a list of not only the Prime Minister's Facebook account, but also the official accounts of several media outlets. That is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like access to news like this and more, subscribe now to Malaysia Kini and support independent media. I'm Camelia. Thanks for watching.